If you want to know how to use a function, the help files are a great resource. However, they can also be a little bit difficult to understand at first. In this video, I will go over each section of a typical help file in R to get you acquainted with the general structure. I will also show you how to find additional documentation. You can find a help file by typing in the console a question mark followed by the function name. You can also search the function in the help tab. Or you can Google R followed by the function name and then search for the R documentation link. Take for example the sum function. Although the precise contents differ by help file, the general outline is as follows. The package it belongs to, a title, a description, the order of arguments and their default inputs, the type of input for each argument, a longer description of the arguments, the expected output, a list of related functions, and finally some examples. Some help files have additional sections, but for now you can ignore these. A great help file is a concise help file. You should think of a help file more as a reminder of how to use the function rather than a proper explanation. This is why I don't really recommend starting with help functions but instead with some tutorials, like the ones introduced in the previous video. Nevertheless, you probably won't remember what each and every function does and how to use it, and this is what the help pages are for. In addition, if you download a package for a specific type of analysis, the help files can help you find which function in the package does what. If you're just trying to find more information on the basic use of R, I recommend sticking to tutorials and exercises for now. Once you feel like you're getting the hang of it, maybe see if you can figure out the use of a function from a help file. For more complex functions, if you want a proper explanation, the first step is to go online and look at the CREN entry for the package that the function belongs to. Here you'll find a reference manual, which contains all the help entries for this package. If you're lucky, the author also wrote a vignette. Vignettes are usually a lot easier to read than help files and often come with entire example analyses. So especially for more complicated functions, I recommend that you start by checking whether there's a vignette. If there isn't, you can often find other resources online that include example uses of functions just by googling R and then the function name. Beware though, R is open source, meaning that anyone, yourself included, can contribute to the repository of available packages. Not all packages are worth your time. It is entirely possible for a package to have somewhat cryptic help files or even functions that aren't working correctly. Always do your due diligence or ask for help if you're not sure. If you're not watching this video in the context of a course, some great resources for help are Stack Overflow for programming related questions and Cross Validated for questions primarily about statistics. With these things in mind, let's go over this particular help page and see what each section means. Some belongs to the base package in R, or in other words, it came pre installed with R and is always available. The title of this function is the sum of vector elements which in layman's terms just means that it sums all the numbers inside a sequence of numbers. The description says more or less the same. The use it section then shows how to use this function. Together with the arguments section, this is what you'll mostly be consulting the help files for. Sum is a simple function, taking on dots, which means multiple arguments to be explained further, and it takes on na.rm with the default option of false. What that means is explained in the next section. Namely, the dots can be any number of vectors, or sequences, and these vectors can be numeric, complex, or logical. Let me demonstrate. The first is easy. The sum function can sum numeric vectors. For example, let's make a vector x containing the following values. The sum is then equal to 1.2. We can also sum complex vectors. These are sequences of numbers that are both a real and imaginary part. If you don't know what that means, you probably don't need it. But as an example, let's say I have a complex vector y containing these values. The sum is then a complex number with real part 4 and imaginary part 0. Lastly, we have an interesting one, namely logical vectors. For example, I can ask R for the sum of the logical vector z containing the values true, true, and false. 
Apparently, this sum is equal to 2. This is something that you'll be using a lot, because it tells you how many times something is true. For example, let's say I want to know how many flowers are of the Setosa species in the iris dataset. To find out, I could run the following. This works because the argument here returns a logical vector. Wherever this vector is equal to true, the species variable is equal to Setosa. Summing this logical vector shows that this is true 50 times. In other words, 50 flowers in this dataset are of the species Setosa. The other argument is for handling missing data. If you have a vector containing missing values, then the sum is undefined. So by default, if I sum 1, 1 and not available, then the answer is also not available. However, it is possible that in the context of your analysis, missing is the same as zero. If this is the case, you can set the na.rm option to true, and the function will sum only non-missing values. Note that missing data is an entire field of research within statistics, so this is not always appropriate, which is why na.rm is by default set to false. This is a generic function, means that if you ever decide to write your own package in R, you can write a set of functions that will be referred to when someone tries to use sum on an object created by your package. The next part explains what I just showed in R, namely what the na.rm argument does and how you can sum logical vectors. The last part you can ignore. The value section explains what the output is, in this case just a sum. For more complex functions, this section can be useful because they can output multiple things at once. Lastly, let's try the examples written here. The first code sums a sequence of integers. Integers are whole numbers and therefore numeric. The second code does the exact same thing, just using a different way to write it. The next example shows that the sum function can not only sum a single sequence, but also multiple sequences. In general, to understand an example, try running the code from inside out. The last two examples demonstrate the use of the NARM option, as I showed before. In later versions of our studio, the help page is already partially accessible while you're typing code. Let me demonstrate. Type sum, open brackets, and then press tab on your keyboard. This will display all arguments that this function accepts. The mouse over event then shows what each argument is. This is nice for quickly finding the names of the arguments and the meaning of each argument. And most of the time this is all you need. However, remember that the actual help page also contains more details, examples, and sometimes a help file describes a whole family of functions. For instance, have a look at the help entry for the dnorm function. This help page shows not one, but four different functions to help you remember which does what. This is especially useful for functions that are very closely related. What these functions do will be explained in a future video on the normal distribution. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.